Hello, dear viewer. Would you be surprised if I told you Jedi Fallen Order has crushed expectations for this last quarter? Yes, that is right. Jedi Fallen Order has beat the initial estimations of between 6 and 8 million copies sold as of December 31st, 2019. According to CFO and COO Blake Jorgensen, Jedi Fallen Order hit the high end of its predictions and that it is beyond our projections for the quarter. There were no specifics given on this quarterly investor call, but it is safe to assume that they sold at least 8 million copies. Their new goal, according to the same call, will be 10 million copies total, so about another 2 million to go by March 31st, 2020. So, when did they come up with this 6 to 8 million figure? Well, that was back in their quarterly call back in May 2019, when they expected Jedi Fallen Order to essentially make them no money. They're going, hey, we're making this game. The House of Mouse has come down and really reamed us a new one after Battlefront 2. So, we need to come up with something. Let's try to give what the fans have been begging for. Let's do this stupid single person thing, even though, you know, we don't believe in it. Single player game, that's a load of crap. It's all about multiplayer, games as a service, and loot boxes. In that same call in 2019, they said that their big breadwinners for the year, the quarter, forever will be Madden and FIFA. Let's face it, Madden 20 whatever and FIFA 20 whatever will always make them a ton of money because of their fantastic predatory loot boxes. Yes, I said it. Yes, I'm calling them out. But it is what it is. No one can deny that. During that time period, they even predicted that Apex Legends would outperform Jedi Fallen Order. And yes, Apex Legends is a freemium game. It's got the meum, which is Latin for not really. So a not really free game was expected to outperform a full price $60 Star Wars outing. Yes, this would be our first single player, truly single player, not that tacked on bullcrap that we got in Battlefront 2. This would truly be a single player experience, no multiplayer, no loot boxes, no shenanigans. EA seriously underestimated how well this game would do, how starved the fans were for this single player experience. Since EA won the rights to the license from Disney, they've only cranked out two Star Wars games. Yeah, only two. Somehow with all that time, with all their studios, with all their experience, they only managed two multiplayer games. The first one was Battlefront 2015, which was multiplayer only. There was a single player campaign, but there was only one map and it was tutorial. There was nothing great about it. You could not play any of the fantastic single player options that were in Battlefront 2 from back before EA had the license. Speaking of Battlefront 2, the 2017 version really went through some horrific things with the insane loot box scandals which you can find all over the internet here. We know what EA did. It was horrible. There's no way that you could have actually played this game way back when. Now they've changed it. They've updated it. They've removed a lot of the loot boxes and pay to win mechanics, which is great. But in my mind, it's too little too late. We were really hoping when EA took over this license that we'd be getting a great single player experience. We were really looking forward to what the LucasArts Battlefront 2 had done and thinking EA would look at this, take it, make it its own, and just have a blast with it. We were looking for a great single player option that just never ever came. What we did get from them with Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2, though DICE is a great studio, I have to believe that EA had a lot of interference with this, and what we got was a feature incomplete version that felt like a blatant cash grab. Eventually, DICE was able to make the game work, and as gorgeous as that game is, it is now playable in a great state without all the aforementioned predatory loot boxes and issues from the launch period. At this point, EA executives must have been thinking that, well, Star Wars is a lost cause. There's no way we will ever make true money without controversy from a Star Wars game. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. Why don't you talk to the big man himself, the CFO, the COO, Blake Jorgensen. When EA decided to shut down Visceral Studios in 2017, Jorgensen had this to say, quote, 
It was an economic decision at the end of the day. You got to cut the bridge when you realize you can't make a lot of money on something. He viewed Visceral Studios as a money pit, something that he would never, ever make money on. No, let me take that back. He would never, ever make a lot of money on. Yeah, that's all he cares about. And I understand running a business, you can't operate on a loss. I totally understand that. Running in the red is a terrible life choice and you will not be around for very long. But listen to what he said when it doesn't make a lot of money, not just some money, not make back its costs, not make a little bit of money, not maybe 50% of what it costs to make it, you know, hey, this game cost 60 million to make. Look, we made 90 million. Well, that's a total loss. We didn't make a lot of money. That's terrible. That is his mindset for video games. Screw the fans. Screw them. We don't care about the fans. We don't need the fans. We just need their money. Who cares what they say? Even negative press is something good. Our name is out there. Well, EA, you've had a lot of negative press out there throughout the years. He genuinely believed that Project Ragtag was a terrible game. He would never thought that Ragtag would ever get them any money back. For those of you unfamiliar with Project Ragtag, this was supposed to be a single player open world experience set in Star Wars. You were supposed to be some kind of scoundrel going around throughout your day-to-day activities, doing whatever you needed to do, whether that was smuggling, trading, fighting, whatever it was, that's what you'd be doing. Think of it as a Han Solo day in the life kind of game. That style, think of that's what you'd be doing. Now, personally, I think that would be a great idea. And there have been some stories about how there were a lot of issues with development. There are a lot of butting heads between Visceral and EA. So we understand that things weren't going great. It wasn't the smoothest development process. There were some issues where allegedly the storyline didn't make sense and the upper executives didn't quite know how this game would really fit in and really work. This may or may not be true. We don't know exactly. I'm sure out there you can find some more rumors on the internet, but this isn't the point of this video. Now, who would ever want a single player game. That is EA's mantra for years now. No one wants a single player story driven experience. It's just not the thing to do. Well, I don't know, maybe the 3 million people who originally bought Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, keep in mind, yes, 3 million does not sound like a lot. Yes, 3 million does not sound like a lot of people, But remember, this came out on the OG Xbox, the original. Way back in 2003, when Xbox first launched, only 16 million units were sold in its lifetime. So 3 million out of the 16 million, that's pretty solid. They did release it on PC, and this does include those numbers. However, let's face it, 3 million is still a lot, especially at that time. Gaming was not what it is today. It wasn't as mainstream. It wasn't as popular. You could also factor in another million copies sold as the Platinum Hits edition. Yeah, so that brings our total up to 4 million Knights of the Old Republic copies sold. That figure does not include any Steam sales. So we know as of recent that Steam has been putting Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 on sale like crazy. So we can only assume that there are millions and millions of people on top of those 4 million that have really enjoyed this game and love the single player RPG elements of it. Now, even with that Knights of the Old Republic example, you're thinking, okay, that one's, you know, 18 years old, give or take. That's an older game, kind of niche, is a pretty hardcore RPG. So, yeah, I could see where EA could say that. Well, let's not forget about the Force Unleashed that sold 6 million copies in North America. When I was in college, that was the talk of the dorm. Everybody wanted to play it. This was LucasArts. This was Star Wars. This was a new campaign in the Star Wars universe. This was Darth Vader's unheard of apprentice. Yes, it was a lot of fun. We had a great time playing it. Again, single player. Six million people have enjoyed this game, not including the copies we shared around our dorms. Yeah, we did that. We traded games. That was something you could do with a PS3 and an Xbox 360. My point is that there is a need, there is a want, there is a desire for a great story-driven single-player experience. Yes, 
2005's Battlefront 2 was great, but not only could you play online multiplayer or have a LAN party or however you wanted to connect, you could do that, but you could also play against the computer, play against the bots, and try to take over the galaxy or try to defend the galaxy. There was a great single player experience that you could have. We've been sorely lacking the story driven single player experience since EA took over this license until Jedi Fallen Order was released. Now, if you look at those previous single player experiences, you know, Jorgensen was looking at that going, how can I cram a crap load of loot boxes and pay to win mechanics? into this game. Look at what EA did to Battlefront 2. You know that they wanted to do this for any game that they put out. They do it for every game they put out, barring Jedi Fallen Order. I bet that they could have put out a solid single player experience much sooner and still had a great multiplayer experience where you could throw in your loot boxes and your pay to win mechanics and have all that hullabaloo and just all that crap there and all that predatory practice that EA is so well known for. For whatever reason, they couldn't figure out how to monetize Project Ragtag, and so it was canceled. They could not figure out how to put some extra multiplayer in there, despite their best efforts. They just could not figure that out. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. I don't know what kind of back and forth happened between the studio and the publisher, because you know there was. You know there definitely was. EA shut down Visceral Games which was a shot across the bow to all the rest of their studios saying, hey, you better get in line, monetize the hell out of your games, or you're getting shut down. There's no room in this company for a single player experience. Everything has to be multiplayer, live service, games as a service. We need loot boxes. We need monetization. We need pay to win. We need to get every single penny out of every single player. Can we even charge for every minute they're online? I don't know. Let's find out. Now, EA's actions said, don't you dare make a single player experience. Whatever you do, it's a terrible idea and we're going to shut you down. Look at Visceral. EA's CEO, Andrew Wilson, insisted that was not the case. He said that this was not the case, yet his actions said something different. He said they needed to follow the market. They needed to look at the market and follow what the market was doing. Translating this from corporate speak to English, he was saying that they needed to have a monetization practice, a live service game, because single player you could not make as much money off of. His complaint that Dead Space 2 only sold 4 million copies speaks volumes about his mindset. Now, there are some estimates floating around out there saying that the game cost roughly $60 million to make and market. And quoting a tweet from Zach Wilson, who was an insider, in his tweet, he said, EA makes $30 per copy after the retailers and council makers take their cut. So doing a quick little math here, we got, uh, let's see, game cost $60 million, they sold $4 million, they make $30 per copy, that comes out to, what, $120 million, so they only doubled it not including any games that they sold through Origin. Let's remember they own Origin and take about 90% of all the money made there. So they probably made even more than that. That is some just quick, dirty napkin math. Now, that 4 million copies sold, that $120 million was still considered a failure by EA. Yeah, somehow that was a failure. And that would explain how things shifted from Dead Space 2 to Dead Space 3. You had choices like adding multiplayer into the game. While it was implemented very well, it still didn't have that right feeling to it. It still felt a little tacked on. Now, you could have fun in that multiplayer experience. It was, it was fun, but it still didn't quite seem to be right when you heard like, hey, Dead Space 3 now has multiplayer. You're going, yeah, okay, all right, I could see that, I guess. Now, EA, for the last couple of years, has a strong track record of maligning single-player experiences. Yes, that seems to be the theme of the video. EA saying, single-player, dead, done, don't need it, dead as a doornail, he kicked the bucket, get on, we're on the multiplayer, we're on the shiny, cool, new multiplayer. You don't exactly need any quotes to see this proof. 
Look at what they've done. Look at how FIFA and Madden have all those crazy player packs or whatever they want to call them. They're loot boxes. They are absolutely loot boxes. And they love them. They make them billions of dollars. Literally billions, with a B, billions of dollars every single year between the newest Madden and the newest FIFA game. You know that they're trying to get Apex Legends up to that same standard as well. They're trying to copy what Fortnite has done with their seasons, with their add-ons, with all their different things like that. You know they're trying to get that up to a billion dollar franchise as well. We know that those games, FIFA, Madden, Apex Legends, those are all live service multiplayer games. But the list goes on. Battlefront 1 and 2, Anthem. Yes, the amazing game that was supposed to be Anthem. It looked great. The intro was fun. And then that was it. That was the whole game. They forgot to make the game when they made the game. EA just put so much emphasis on all of that monetization that they didn't have time to cram a game into their theft. Simple as that. Now, as I previously mentioned, there's no doubt in my mind that Disney took good old EA out behind the woodshed and gave him a stern talking to after the Battlefront 2. Now, I'm sure Mickey came down from his throne of money and had a nice little talking to with Mr. Wilson and Mr. Jorgensen. I'm sure this happened, saying, hey, you know, this is Star Wars. What are you doing with Star Wars? Don't mess with Star Wars. It's Star Wars. We've spent $4 billion to acquire this property. What are you doing with our Star Wars? Don't mess with Star Wars, or else, you know, we got a few guys out back. You might have an accident. You never know. So, after this little talking to that may or may not have happened, the assets from Project Ragtag were definitely um, repurposed, reused, reduced, recycle, and that kind of turned into Jedi Fallen Order. Now, I'm not upset if assets from other games that have failed that would work would come in. Like, work smarter, not harder. Why reinvent the lightsaber if someone already made it? Just take it in and tweak it, update it. Boom, done. So Ragtag became Jedi Fallen Order. And then we were happy and we all rejoiced and EA had a come to Jesus moment and went, I see the light and it is good. I love it. I love single player experiences. Oh no, that didn't actually happen. Now, we all really enjoyed Jedi Fallen Order. Yes, 8 million of us love Jedi Fallen Order, not including all the people who watch the live streams who may not own the game. But let's face it, you, you might hate me for this one. It is a fairly by the numbers Star Wars story. They didn't really innovate too crazy here. They didn't really do too many new things. They didn't take a lot of chances with this. They needed for this game to be popular, and that's about it. They needed to not lose a lot of money on it. That's about all they did. Well, they didn't innovate. They did put a high level of polish on this game. It looks gorgeous. It plays phenomenally. I haven't had any issues. Yes, there are little bugs here and there, and you can find stories of people having some bugs where there are glitches. That happens. You can't catch every bug. I've mentioned this in a lot of previous videos. You can't catch every bug. Now, when I played it about a month and a half after release, I did not find any issues with it. So take that with a grain of salt. I know people probably did, but for the most part, all those bugs were fixed that were on there at launch. You think at this point that EA is now getting their act together. They've seen that a single player game can still make money, still be popular. Well, dear viewer, you would actually be pretty naive at this point to think that because it's EA and they have a longer track record of being a shady, nefarious company, voted worst company to work for in America three or four years in a row. They have a longer track record of that than making good games. So let's take a look at some of the decisions that were made around the entire Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order experience. First, let's take a look at that November launch lineup and see what this game had to compete against. Remember, Jedi Fallen Order released November 15th, 2019. On this day, not only did Jedi Fallen Order come out, but arguably the biggest franchise in the world also had another game coming out on the same day. That monumental, colossus, momentous occasion was the day that Pokemon Sword and Shield 
flew off the shelves. I'm not even saying sold. That flew off the shelves. Everybody got their hands on that. So you had a choice on release day. Jedi Fallen Order and Pokemon Sword and Shield. Pokemon Sword and Shield, yes, you could argue that that would be a slightly different demographic. You've got Pokemon going up against Star Wars. Pokemon is more of a kid's game, but let's face it, us adults enjoy the hell out of it too. And then you've got Jedi Fallen Order, which, yes, it's a Star Wars game. Yes, we love Star Wars. We remember the old Star Wars games fondly, but we also remember what EA did. So a lot of people have now flocked all the way over to Pokemon. So there you go. They're thinking, okay, we're going to compete against Pokemon. Yeah, they're setting that up for failure. That was much like when Titanfall had to go up against Call of Duty. And then they wondered why Titanfall didn't perform well. <laughs> Guess what? You're trying to draw from the same pool. That's just not going to happen. So not exactly the same pool here with Fallen Order and Pokemon, but hey, let's continue. What else was supposed to come out in November? Hey, we had Death Stranding. Say what you will about it. It was a completely hyped game. A lot of people wanted to see what it was about. Kojima had been talking about it for years. We had no idea what was going on. We knew there were piss grenades and babies, and you were basically a postman. You were trying to deliver the mail. We had no idea what was going on, and that came out the week prior, exactly one week prior. So a lot of people were still playing Death Stranding, didn't have time for Jedi Fallen Order. Yes, not quite exactly the same demographic, but combine that with Pokemon Sword and Shield, and you're starting to pull out decent amounts of chunks of people who would play this game. Finally, originally, Doom Eternal was supposed to launch the week after Jedi Fallen Order. I know, Doom Eternal, gory, bloody, hellscape, but remember, a lot of those people would still play the same thing. They would still play Jedi Fallen Order and Doom Eternal that week. There is only a week in between. So, what are we doing here? EA is looking to set this up as a failure. Now, I know there's a lot of hype surrounding Jedi Fallen Order, and it's hard to compare this to Doom Eternal, Pokemon, and Death Stranding. All those games, all four of those games, have a lot of hype around them. But let's face it, Star Wars, Jedi Fallen Order, kind of at the bottom. We remember that Battlefront 2 looked good on paper. It looked glorious. It looked gorgeous. It was immaculate. The photorealism was amazing. So when we looked at Jedi Fallen Order and we're like, hey, that looks amazing too. Oh, is it going to play like crap again? Is it going to be this predatory crap that we've been so accustomed to? With Jedi Fallen Order, I was not confident that EA would not somehow introduce later on down the line some kind of monetization into this. I was convinced, absolutely convinced that two, three months later, EA would be like, all right, uh, Jedi Fallen Order's kind of fallen down. Let's throw in those loot boxes. Hey, let's get that pay to win mechanic. Hey, you want a hot pink lightsaber? Well, that's going to cost you 10 bucks. I was convinced, absolutely convinced that would happen. And here we are two and a half months later, and this has not happened yet. I'm not convinced that this won't happen, but who knows? We'll see. Right now, the writing is kind of saying like, hey, you know, this isn't actually going to happen, which I'm happy about. But that's sad that I had to think that way. That's how EA has made me think about their games. Yeah, look, we got this. It's good. There aren't going to be any loot boxes. Hey, 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 just, just between you and me, we're going we're gonna to put them in like three months later. That's exactly what I expected to happen. That is exactly what I expected to happen. I'm pleasantly surprised that they aren't as shady as I was led to believe. Now let's take a look at the marketing tactics of Jedi Fallen Order. They weren't exactly what you'd normally expect from a AAA experience. Doom has had trailers and gameplay and tons and tons of information out there. Death Stranding, Kojima wouldn't stop talking about it. Let's, let's be honest here. There was, what, an hour's worth of gameplay footage out there that he did live? You could avoid it if you wanted, but a lot of people didn't. They wanted to figure out what was going on in this game. There was so much surrounding it. Pokemon. They could get away with less marketing because it's Pokemon. Everybody's going to buy it. You kind of know what you're getting with that brand. Star Wars, you used to be able to do that. Back in the LucasArts days, you knew what you were getting, but that has changed. So their marketing for this was minimal. It was a little lackluster in my opinion, especially when you compare that again to Death Stranding, Cyberpunk 2077, and Doom Eternal. I think Star Wars could have used a little more marketing, but this goes to show 
EA wasn't confident in this. They didn't want to spend a bunch of money on a game that wouldn't sell. In my opinion, their whole plan with this was to just go out, make a game, make what the fans wanted, and then when it flops, we could go, see, I told you, I told you nobody wants to make that stupid single player game. Nobody wants it. We're only making multiplayer. We're only making live service. That's it. This single player crap is done. We've put it to bed. And look, the peasants are rioting because the game isn't fun. They don't like it. Oh, <laughs> we don't like it. Oh, posh here. We, those peasants don't like a single player game that we crapped out. Well, I guess it's back to the stacks and stacks of money with our multiplayer experience. Ho <laughs> ho. Yeah, that's exactly how I imagine EA. That is probably not far off from it. That's how it feels to the consumer. Yes, we're all consumers. Yes, we can vote with our wallets. So if they put out the crap like that, don't play it. Jedi Fallen Order, worth playing. Battlefront 2 at launch, not worth playing. EA's thought of, hey, if it's crap, we don't ever have to do a single player game. But if it's good, we get a whole bunch of free press. People like me, people like other games news outlets saying, hey, look at this. EA actually made a good game. They get a lot of free press and a lot of good stuff out of it with minimal work, minimal effort. So either way, it's a win-win for them. Either they can sit there and say, I told you so. It was a stupid idea. Single player is crap. Or they could sit there and go, see, we made what you wanted. Look at us. We're awesome. Go us. Go EA. We're not that bad. Just look at Bethesda. They've really screwed the pooch. Hey, look at Blizzard. Thank God we're not Blizzard. Yeah, yeah. They're not Blizzard. They're not Bethesda. They do their own weird crap. Each of those three companies does their own weird thing to screw the consumer over in their own individual way. Now, EA, you would think, is starting to see the error of their ways, the error in their logic, where people don't want the single player. Look at how well Jedi Fallen Order has sold. Look at how well Spider-Man has sold. Look at how well God of War has sold. All of those single player experiences, no loot boxes, no crazy monetization. It was fantastic. It was a return to form. It was back how we got into gaming and we loved it. Do you remember these days? The days where you got a cartridge, you got a complete game. The days of Sonic 2. Even the days of Battlefront 2. You got a complete game. A fully playable experience with no extra monetization. Now, you can argue that that didn't happen because they couldn't do it at the time. Well, they still had additional content that you could buy. You still had expansion packs that you could buy. You could get Sonic 2. You could get Sonic 2 and Sonic and & Knuckles. You get the special cartridge here. And it's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. There you go. You've got now two games that you can market. That's what Sega did. Another interesting point here with their marketing tactics, it's, Hey, we know we're EA. We know we suck. We know we've put tons of monetizations in other other games. But hey, we're not that EA. No, 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 no. We're we're a different EA. We're no. That's that's our that's our shady cousin. That he just he stumbled into the office and took over for the last ten years. We don't we don't know who he is. He just we're kicking him out now. We called security. We're not that EA. We're not gonna put we're not gonna put loot boxes. I promise into our games. Yeah. I don't believe it. I really don't believe it. Now, I really don't believe it at all. Even though EA has now revised their projections for Jedi Fallen Order to sell 10 million copies total by the end of March 2020. Now we know EA has seen the success. We know that first person story driven narratives are fantastic. We know that they are amazing. We all love them. For years, they've been saying that single player is dead. Jedi Fallen Order is the game that has proved themselves wrong. They've made a game that proves their theory wrong. How will they react? How will they look at this and go, all right, we need to make more single player games. There is Jedi Fallen Order 2 in the works right now. We know this. That has been leaked. That has been out there. With the success, they'd be dumb not to. However, they've made a lot of dumb decisions before. So I'm not entirely convinced that they're going to change anything outside of just this Star Wars game. People have said that EA really has learned their lesson here. I don't believe it. I've said many times before that one good game is an accident. 
two good games is a coincidence. Three is a trend. So right now we're still waiting and I have no idea what they're going to do with Fallen Order 2. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, especially in light of Project Luminous, which I have previously talked about. That is their all-encompassing experience of all Star Wars. That is the video games, the comics, the TV shows, and the movies. One massive universe that will make the MCU look like nothing. It's a cool idea. It's an interesting idea. I want to know what EA is going to do with this. Have they actually learned their lesson? I don't think so. I think that when this deal is up, I think Disney is going to pull the license from them. What they should do, what Disney should do, is have studios come to them, have CD Projekt Red come to them and go, hey, we've got an idea for a Star Wars RPG. Everybody would drool. Could you imagine a CD Projekt Red Star Wars RPG after The Witcher? And what it looks like we're getting with cyberpunk oh my gosh oh that would be amazing so let me know what you think down in the comments did ea really learn their lesson are you excited about a new fallen order game thanks for watching if you like this video give us a big old thumbs up if you didn't that's all right let me know in the comments what you didn't like don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications we have new content coming out all the time also remember to take care of yourselves mentally and physically. A little self-care here and there goes a long way. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.